It is icy out this morning. 28 degrees. What the hell? I need bagels though. Like really bad. Like I really want a bagel. It's fine. There's this amazing Jewish deli down the street from here and it reminds me so much of the East Coast. It's like the only place in Columbus that you can get a bagel that tastes like a bagel you get in Philly or New York. And it's just delicious. I'm excited even thinking about it. You put hummus on it, you use some margarine, vegan, vegan butter. vlog start date December 18th I am no longer sick which is amazing I'm trying to work out the finalized details of backer kit and shipping for something is wrong here a little bit later than I would have liked but it's getting done it's getting done and I was just thinking about how sometimes when um, I'm working on a game and I hit a wall and with like a problem in that game that I can't solve at that moment. Sometimes it takes working on other games or other projects to kind of break through that wall. Like I haven't solved it yet or I haven't seen it solved in a way that applies to what I'm trying to make. So if I can't fix it in what I'm working on, I have to work on something else to fix it. It's weird. It's a weird part of the creative process. So like I've had this problem with Sync for a while where I'm unsure where to position the characters in the context of a cyberpunk marginalized world. So like, do I reflect the marginalization in the identities they're allowed to choose on their characters? Or do I somehow reflect that in the setting and then allow them to be as free as they want? But does that make sense? You know what I mean? So like you know, what if the cyberpunk regime wants you to check off gender boxes the way that we do in the US, which is basically a cyberpunk regime, where you have two gender options, male or female. What? <laughs> First of all, not gender. But, uh, you know, so I could reflect that reality in the metaphor of the cyberpunk game, right? And say like, well, in your character sheet, you have two options. And that's kind of like what the government wants you to be. But then you have these other options over here that is like the entire giant, you know, thousand selection of genders of whatever you want, whatever gender identity you want. But how do I show that in a quick and easy way on a character sheet that's edited down into simple, accessible concepts for like a game? That's the hard part. Like, not the ideas, but like how do I put it in the game? Where do I put it in the game? For a while I wasn't able to kind of conceptualize like what the group was that the characters were a part of in sync because you know it's an emo feels focused cyberpunk world that's kind of loosely based around well <laughs> very much inspired by William Gibson novels. Um, kind of the later ones like Pattern Recognition and uh, Adoru in particular, um, as well as like hacker, movies like Hackers and um, you know the TV show Halt and Catch Fire. They're like these cyberpunk stories that are in a near future. They're not like as far future maybe as Ghost in the Shell, for example. Um, and they deal with feelings. And so, and, and in a lot of these stories, characters, you know, they're like hackers coming together to hack things. <laughs> like, uh, that's that's kind of it. They're like part of like a hacktivism commune movement. Or in the case of William Gibson books, connected by circumstance. So like, I didn't really understand how to position them in my game. It's not like they're all in high school, you know, or um, they're all criminals working on a heist together um, to make, you know, to make money and gain power. They're just like hacktivists, kind of. Um, 
And so, like, I, I guess I kind of decided that they were part of a hacktivist commune, you know, like they intentionally came together to do activism and change their neighborhood and the world around them. So that was cool. But then I was like, the identity stuff, it's so complicated. Like, I wanted to reflect the complex nature of identity within a city, within a neighborhood, um, you know, the complex reality of ethnicities and cultures and genders and sexualities like within those spaces and how, like how do you do that on a character sheet <laughs> like I've never seen that done on a character sheet really I've seen things get close to it I think that's part of the reason why I like Apocalypse World Games so much because um, it was one of the first games that I saw that like reflected complex identity choices and those are my favorite ones that weren't like here's a map of your history you know like kind of like the cyberpunk 2020 or whatever uh, role-playing game does where it like kind of maps out your history which I think is also cool but I don't know I wanted to just like give people choices that I that you could just kind of like easily tick off and circle kind of like uh, my favorite interface, Monster Hearts. I still haven't 100% solved that problem, so I'm working on that. But the problem that I think I did solve <laughs> is that um, that dynamic between the outside culture of the world and the inside culture of the characters. And that is to like intentionally make it an inside culture. Um, you know, you can have characters that live in a world that are kind of like in a pocket world of that world, which is like most people, um, where they identify with certain things that have to do with their subculture or their mini culture. Um, and so probably what I'll end up doing is like highlighting the subculture of the hacktivists in the commune, right? Like here are different types of hacktivists and communes maybe that you could be a part of and different um, subculture identities that they they kind of attach to you and how you can apply that to your own personal identity. It's kind of like a tiered thing, which I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but I was thinking about it in relation to my butterfly game that I'm making because in that game, the main characters who, um, uh, they basically join a commune to save vulnerable species. So they are intentionally removing themselves from the main culture to do something kind of weird and activist-y, uh, you know, and then that becomes their their subculture. So like kind of thinking in the game, of, of characters in the game in that way. So you know, this took many months of removal from not working on sync because I was working on other things like freelance work and something is wrong here. And you know, uh, this the butterfly game that I want to make and thinking about the Anthropocene, all this other stuff to get me to here, to this <laughs> conclusion that, oh, this thing can be like this thing in this other game. Brains are weird. That's, this is my new vlog, brains are weird. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, I guess the moral of the story is, you know, if you're stuck, don't stay stuck by like waiting for that thing to come to you. Like put it down, work on other things. When you're working on other things, you might find the solution you're working you're looking for. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe down below. And it's almost 2019. I'm excited. It's going to be a better year. I'll see you in my next video.